In the royal capital Paluma, the Demi humans are subjected to hard labor by humans, but our MC Bonaza is different as he treats them equally and even pays them for their work. The Demi humans refuse to accept the payment, but being a goody two shoes, Bonaza insists that they take the payment and have lunch. Seeing all this, the capitalist traders from America call him a hypocrite which makes Bonaza wonder why they all can't live in harmony. Suddenly, Bonaza gets teleported into another world where he's surrounded by priests and a guy who welcomes him to the magical kingdom of Clarode and addresses him as a hero candidate. Bonaza cannot comprehend what's transpiring as the guy further tells him that he has been summoned to protect their kingdom from the Dark Army. He is then asked to place his hand on an orb that'll determine his magical energy. As soon as his skills get appraised, they realize that Bonaza is just a pathetic loser who has no divine revelation. Just then, another guy is summoned from some other world and that edgy guy turns out to be insanely overpowered. Seeing this, the demi-humans and all the priests start simping over him. After this, the ugly king of this kingdom declares the other guy as the hero and Banaza is informed that he cannot return to his kingdom because the gate that was used to summon him is closed. They also grant him special permission to stay in the Delaveza forest. On his way to the forest, Banaza questions the demi-human escorting him some questions regarding this world, but gets completely ignored just as my crush ignores me. He then questions the demi-human if he's in a slave contract with the king. In response to this, the guy starts laughing and reveals that humans and demi-humans live in harmony in this world. He then instructs Banaza to bottle up and closes the door. Later on, as they reach the forest, the demi-human hands over a small pouch to him and warns him to get out of here if he wants to survive. After this, Banaza brings out a sword from the pouch and comments on how worn out it actually looks. Just then, he comes across some slimes and as he gets rid of them, he reaches level. Two and all his stats also level up. Being dumb, Banaza fails to recognize the infinity symbol in front of his stats and he still believes that he's a pathetic loser. He also activates the voice instruction because he's a loner. The voice informs him that the pouch is imbued with a locator and another spell that attracts monsters. This makes him realize that the trash king wants him to die. Following this, as he is about to enter the forest, the voice warns him that the forest is heavily polluted by militia, which refers to liquid and gas produced by demons. The voice then asks if he wants to purify the entire forest and without thinking any further, Banaza agrees to this. Meanwhile, the princess of the kingdom confronts her good-for-nothing father for sending Banaza to the Delveza forest. According to her, it was their fault for summoning Banaza into this world, but the king doesn't accept his mistake and calls Banaza trash. Just then, a guy appears in front of him and reports that ultimate holy magic spell has been cast. Hearing this, the king believes that the hero must have cast the spell and gets overjoyed. However, the guy further reveals that the spell was actually cast in the forest where they sent Banaza. Meanwhile, Banaza utilizes a unique skill shapeshift to alter his appearance so he can venture inside town. While choosing the gender, he actually chooses female and turns into a beauty with massive melons, but transposes his choice immediately. This time, he turns into a stud. Now that he has altered his appearance, it's about time he ventures to Castle Town. The voice suggests using teleportation to move instantly as Banaza agrees using it. Upon reaching the town, he heads towards the guild where he is informed about everything related to being an adventurer. Since he cannot register himself as Banaza, he registers himself as Fleo, which is actually his old dog's name. After this, as he is looking for some random jobs, he notices a girl urging people to escort her to the Delweza forest, but gets refused by everyone. Seeing this, Bazana approaches her and offers to escort her. As they are conversing, he accidentally utters teleportation magic which shocks the entire guild. Just then, some other adventurers appear at the spot and label him a child trafficker for lying about using teleportation magic. To clear his name, Banaza urges them to accompany him, to which they agree. With this, he casts the teleportation magic and teleports all of them to the forest. This makes them wonder if he's not your average loser, but a high-level mage. They also apologize for their rude behavior. Meanwhile, the little girl is shocked over the fact that the forest is not covered in militia anymore. This makes the other women realize that this girl is actually a demon and threaten her to reveal her true identity. The girl takes their insult to heart and transforms into a massive wolf demon named Fenris. She was instructed by her brother to scout the enemy and gather the prey. The adventurers, on the other hand, were not expecting such a high-caliber demon to appear there. However, much to the demon's surprise, Banaza was not affected by her militia at all and decides to get rid of him. 
Bonazza has no other choice but to teleport the others back to the town and after doing this, he unleashes all his magic spells to defeat the demon. After teleporting the useless women to the town, Bonazza is up against Fenris the demon. With no other option, he decides to use all the magic spells in his arsenal and take down the demon. He even manages to dodge its attacks with the meteoric leap and then counterattacks with the whirlwind. The demon somehow manages to get out of the attack, but Bonazza traps it with gravitation magic. The monster attempts to escape using instant teleportation, but Bazana's AI dispels its magic and renders the monster powerless. Bonazza, on the other hand, is figuring out ways to seize the monster. The AI suggests using subjugation magic that will make the monster his servant, but Bonazza immediately rejects this proposal, stating that he doesn't want to make anyone his servant. The AI, however, keeps recommending him to use subjugation, but Bonazza persists in his decision. In the meantime, the demon's magic runs out and it surrenders, stating that a warrior without magic has no right to live. It further demands Bonazza to kill it, but he refuses since fighting was not his intention to begin with. Just then, he dispels his gravitation magic and frees the demon. This shocks the demon and it questions the reason behind it. Bonazza asserts that being a human or a demon doesn't even matter to him and he doesn't want to fight someone who has already surrendered. Hearing this, the demon transforms into a woman with massive melons. Bonazza immediately offers her his jacket as suddenly, the woman collapses. Following all this, Bonazza sets up a camp where he scans through his magic spells and remembers people deeming teleportation magic as something mighty. This makes him ponder why he can use such a magic spell. Meanwhile, Fenris also awakens from her sleep and notices that her magic has already been replenished. She then approaches Bonazza and questions if he casted healing magic on her to which he replies positively. Fenris explains that it would have been natural if she had been killed and skinned, but Bonazza saved her. She then pledges that she would never hurt humans again and acknowledges Bonazza as her master. Bonazza, on the other hand, refuses to be called her master, but Fenris persists, stating that she can carry his stuff or even become his slave. Bonazza refuses all these options, but after seeing Fenris bawling her eyes out, he allows her to accompany him. Following this, Bonazza reveals everything about his past and how he was summoned as pathetic loser. Even after hearing all this, Fenris vows to stay beside him. Meanwhile, the hero's entire army got wiped out by some magic beasts and the hero blames it all on the knights. The ugly king, however, doesn't trust and questions his knight about this. The knight tells him that hero pissed his pants after witnessing some monsters and abandoned his army. On this way to his room, the useless hero cannot figure out the reason his stats aren't increasing. Just as he is stressing about it, another woman with massive melons appears out of nowhere and accompanies the hero to his room. Amidst all this, Bonazza takes Fenris to the town and decides to get her registered with the Adventurer's Guild. As they are venturing through the town, a traitor mistakes them for a couple and Bonazza deems this a good strategy to avoid misunderstandings. This makes Fenris insanely happy since she always wanted a husband like Bonazza. Upon reaching the guild, Bonazza gets Fenris registered as Riss. Just then, the guild makes an emergency announcement regarding an urgent request to get rid of the Psycho Bears heading towards the town. Fenris suggests that they participate in this request, but Bonazza refuses, stating that he is way too weak. With no other option left, Fenris decides to defeat them by herself to prove that Bonazza is overpowered as hell. With this, they teleport to the location where the Psycho Bears were last spotted. Fenris is confident that she can defeat them alone, but Bonazza still accompanies her, stating that she cannot leave her alone. Hearing this, Fenris comments that they can even defeat the Demon Lord if they're together. Just then, they hear some women screaming and rush towards them, only to come across those useless adventurers from before. Seeing this, Fenris suggests that they leave them behind, but being a goody two-shoes, Bonazza decides to help them. Just as they take down the bears, the girls recognize Bonazza immediately and question him about Fenris. Bonazza introduces her as his companion which disappoints her. Suddenly, a psycho bear appears out of nowhere and ambushes Fenris who scares the living shit out of it and they decide to tame the bear as their pet. They even name the bear as Sib. Following all this, Bonazza takes the useless women to his house where they introduce themselves as Bailarasa, Blossom, Bailari, and Bulano. Even though all of them are knights serving the king, they urge Bonazza to take them in as his students. According to them, the hero's army was wiped out by some psycho bears and the hero blamed everything on the knights. Now, the king wants the knights to be capable enough to take down at least one psycho bear by themselves. They also admit that they are weaklings and want Bonazza to teach them. 
Bonazza wants to help them, but he is just as useless as them, so it would get difficult for him. He then reintroduces Fenris as his wife and upon hearing this, Fenris agrees to training the useless women. Now that Bonazza has agreed to help them, the women have another request. They want him to let them stay in their house and for some reason, Fenris agrees to this as well. Meanwhile, the Demon King has been reported about the purification magic casted in the forest. This shocks him as he demands to locate the human who casted such powerful magic alone. My man Banaza wakes up to Fenris staring at his face which shocks him and he questions the reason behind it. Fenris reminds him that they're a married couple and are supposed to stay in the same room. Banaza remembers that Fenris was prepared to get laid last night, but he refused her polite offering, stating that they should officially get married first. He then offers to sleep in the living room, but Fenris asserts that Bailarasa and the others would suspect their relationship. With no other option left, both of them have to sleep in the same room. In the present, as Fenris is helping Banaza get undressed, Bailarasa appears out of nowhere and misinterprets this situation. Following this, Bailarasa and the others go up against a psycho bear and get absolutely folded. This makes Banaza realize that they are just as useless as Aqua. Banaza then allotted them a room to stay in and they shamelessly accept his offer. Just then, Fenris calls them for dinner and much to their surprise, she has prepared some raw meat for them. Seeing all this, Banaza suggests that it would be better if she cooked the meat, but Fenris fails to comprehend the reason behind it. Realizing that he is surrounded by useless brats, Banaza decides to prepare dinner himself. Fenris, on the other hand, was a bit hesitant to try cooked meat, but after taking a bite, she fell in love with it. The following day, Banaza and Fenris take all the psycho bears they had captured to the Adventurer's Guild which shocks them as they fail to comprehend how a single individual can capture such mighty numbers. The adventurers inside the guild are also talking behind his back because they have nothing better to do. Fenris then seeks consent for venturing into the town since they still have some time before the assessment. Just then, a guy named Lilith approaches Banaza and introduces himself, revealing that he wants to discuss something with him. As Banaza follows him into a room, Fenris also leaves the guild to learn cooking from someone in the town. Lilith tells him that his fame has spread all across the country and after hearing about his accomplishments, the king wants him to serve under the hero. They will also grant him knight status and even though the guild doesn't want to let someone like him to leave, they want him to save their sorry asses. Hearing all this, Banaza concludes that he has no reason to fight those demons and refuses their offer. With this, he leaves the guild and comes across Fenris, who is all worn out. This makes him wonder if she got into a scuffle or anything. Fenris, on the other hand, cannot believe that cooking was that difficult as during her first class, she literally blew up the entire kitchen. Meanwhile, the useless hero is enjoying his time with some women who tell him about an adventurer who is insanely overpowered. Even though the hero is a pathetic loser, he still brags about his strength and demands to bring Banaza under him. Exact one month has passed after this offer and the castle is still pestering Banaza regarding this matter. Meanwhile, the useless women are doing everything except training and Bailarasa is even seeking Banaza's attention by acting weak. Fenris, however, is not giving them a single opportunity to score their goal. With all of this going on, a mysterious person with cat ears is stalking them. Later on, Fenris prepares dinner for all of them and much to their surprise, her cooking has improved a lot. Fenris reveals that she has been taking cooking classes in the town recently and it seems like her hard work is finally paying off. To top it all, she even made curry for Banaza. With all of this going on, the mysterious Catwoman has recognized Fenris and is shocked to see that the most feared warrior in the Demon King's army is now cooking food for her husband. Just then, Fenris appears behind her and addresses her as Illuminis. She takes her inside and questions her regarding her actions. Illuminis reveals that she is here to investigate the area, while pondering about Banaza and Fenri's relationship. Even with her appraisal skill, she cannot read his stats. Illuminis then reveals that they have noticed some strange changes in this area, including the fact that there are magic beasts in this area. This makes Banaza realize that his purification magic must have worked back then. This shocks Illuminis as she realizes that Banaza is the man behind Fenri's brother Fengarol's death. Even though Fenris knew about it, she kept quiet because she believed that it was her brother's fault for being too weak. Suddenly, Bailarasa and the others appear out of nowhere and apologize for eavesdropping. With no other option left, Illuminus challenges Banaza to a battle, only to get folded in mere seconds. Now that the matter is resolved, Banaza reveals everything to Bailarasa and the others, stating that he kept this fact a secret because he was afraid that it might trouble them. 
even though it is their moral duty to report Fenris to the castle, Bailarasa and the others decide not to because they owe her a lot. Just then, Fenri senses massive dragons heading towards them with Illuminas leading them. Bonaza, however, gets insanely excited after seeing them which shocks her. Seeing his carefree behavior, Illuminas instructs the dragons to attack him, but Bonaza absolutely obliterates them with his holy magic. He also helps the muscle mommy to acquire the dragon slayer skill and enhance her level. Seeing all this, the demon lord decides to confront Bonaza himself, 